Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulesha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 14, a shorter discourse on the mass of suffering. Now the context of this discourse, uh, okay, before moving forward, the link to the complete discourse is given in the description. So you can check and read the complete discourse and get your own insights. There is also uh, the entire playlist on Middle Discourses which contains the Sutta wise uh, uh, videos that I have made on the various discourses. So that also you can check out. right? So the context here uh, of the middle discourses 14 where Buddha gave the shorter discourse on the mass of suffering is that there was a question by Mahanama to Buddha. So Mahanama said to Buddha, though I understand that greed, hatred and delusion corrupt the mind, I cannot give them up. I wonder what qualities are there in me that I have such thoughts. So I think this is the same problem that we all have, right? We all want to walk on the path of the Buddha and we all want to purify ourselves. But there are still certain sticky things that, you know, we always, you know, so this is my question also, that why these certain things are there? Out of 10, like even after years of practice, like two, three things, it's very difficult for you to, uh, for us to uh, uh, kind of give give up, right? Because they, they are so sticky, they have been built up after, you know, life after life of continuing those thought patterns and everything. So what is the answer of Buddha? Buddha said, yes, there is a quality. So Mahanama's question was, what quality I have that makes me, you know, continue doing such things. And uh, I know that this is wrong that I'm doing, but I cannot give this up. So Buddha said, yes, there is a quality. Otherwise, you would not be still living at home and enjoying sensual pleasures. Sensual pleasures give little gratification and much suffering and distress. So Buddha is saying, and uh, this is where, so I'm not 100% sure on this particular thing. So in the Theravada tradition, it is like said that, you know, uh, somewhere, you know, to be fully enlightened, you need to, you know, uh, you need to be fully, you know, out of your uh, you know, home life and everything and be a monk, right? But there is nothing like that only when, you, if you become a monk only, then you can practice the Buddha's path, no. But then somewhere you have to drop all these desires and attachments, right? Now, being a householder, being a lay life person like you and me, uh, if you're watching me as a, as a lay life, you are a, a householder, it's difficult, right, uh, to to not be attached to certain things. Like you have kids, you have your relationship with your wife and job and everything and then that attachment and everything comes up. So Buddha said that if you had totally given up uh, that quality uh, of attachment, you would not be living at home. You would have, you know, uh, uh, you not be enjoying sensual pleasures. And they do, they offer little clarification. So my understanding here is that Buddha is not exhorting that per, the person to leave his family life. Buddha is basically exhorting that, yes, as per your current stage, you have these qualities. And what we have to do as a lay people is to keep watching and keep Removing that desire, it's like removing a thorn from the feet, right? I can be in a relationship with my wife or I can be a father to my kids, but I can ensure that I do not have unnecessary attachment or desire or craving or possessing my wife and my children and the money and the social power that I have, right? So that is what where I have to do the thing. That is that change I need to bring, right? Okay, so Buddha says that even though a noble disciple has clearly seen with right wisdom, as long as they do not achieve the rapture and bliss that are more peaceful than the pleasure that they get in the sensual pleasures and unskilled qual uh, qualities, they can return to the sensual, sensual pleasures. So this is where Buddha is saying that even if like you are a noble disciple, you are practicing on the path for years and you have known that, okay, this is the right path and uh, basically... Uh, the important thing is that you, as long as you do not achieve that level of rapture and bliss, that means that level of bliss which is like, uh, which is like, uh, which crosses the threshold of the pleasure that you get from the sensual pleasures. See, there is a sensual pleasure, pleasure we get from the sensual pleasures, engaging in the sensual pleasures, and then there is a higher pleasure we get from the uh, meditation. So unless you have achieved that kind of a pleasure, which totally overshadows this kind of a lower kind of a pleasure, 
you will continue to engage in the lower kind of pleasures right so this is a you know again buddha is very very clear and to the point on what exactly is right so we have to keep working on ourselves keep working uh, keep doing our meditation and achieve that level of stillness that level of rapture and bliss where we do not feel the need for the gaining the pleasure through the engaging in the sensual pleasures so we will engage in the day to day life but we will not engage unconsciously we will remain conscious and aware that there there is no pleasure there there is only suffering and distress the pleasure that we get from our meditation has to be more so that is what we need to aim for right we need to uh, kind of strengthen our practice so much that these pleasures be- become you know in hindi there is the words fika right the ple- pleasure these pleasures the sensual pleasures become tasteless right okay uh so buddha, buddha says that when they do achieve that rapture in bliss or something more peaceful and then that they do not return to sensual pleasures right so it is like it now it relates to this buddha's teaching on the various stages of awakening so the first stage of awakening this is stream enter which is sotapanna you can see my video on the various stages of awakening so the sotapanna has not fully given up the greed desire and hatred and aversion and everything but at least he has lowered them to a considerable amount whereby he doesn't go back in the hell realms right there will be only a maximum seven lives before him where he will achieve full enlightenment so that has to be our primary target so we may not be like in this life totally you know be free of defilements and become an arhant that may not be possible it may be possible right but at least that should be our first goal to become a sotapanna right a stream enterer where we reduce them to an extent that in our rebirths that we get we keep on pursuing our goal we do not lose we do not lose ourselves we do not do not do any act in our later lifetimes which moves us to hell realms right so somewhere this is linked with that then buddha said that before his awakening he also went through this phase right so buddha is like relating that this is how buddha's knowledge and buddha as a as a human is so relatable so that's why he never claimed himself to be a god there are there are people who made him a god right due to their own selfish interests buddha was a human who had made all the efforts required to become a liberated being and he showed the way that he, i have become you can also become right so buddha in many discourses i found he tells his own journey of awakening where he also says that he i have also gone through the same phase i had also the same questions right and this is so kind of a gladdening to hear right okay so we don't like see buddha as some extraordinary kind of a you know out of the world kind of a being and you know it's so becoming relatable that okay i can also if buddha has done 100% i can also do 0.1% or 1% work that is itself why even if i do 1% of what buddha achieved my life is worth it it gives us the motivation right to practice buddha's teachings okay so so learning is is that we have to go deeper in our meditation uh, i practice vipassana meditation inside meditation achieve that state of rapture and bliss right in on front of it the joy of the sensual pleasures becomes less then buddha again in this sutta buddha again explained the gratification of the Uh, basically the gratification drawback and escape from the sense pleasures and forms and feelings this is this is basically the same thing which is given in uh, middle discourse 13 which is a longer discourse on the mass of suffering again the same thing is coming here right so so i will not take it up you can see my video on mn 13 middle discourse is 13 and uh, there i have dis- explained it in detail then there is this story about some jain ascetics that buddha met and do those jain ascetics when buddha met them they were standing and they were not sitting and they had felt they were feeling pain sharp sensation due to over exertion see what the jain practice was was to keep penis tap the hindi word is tapasya tap is to do the penis 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 to clear off the past karmas right so then buddha and now the important thing understand here is that buddha himself had done a lot of self fortification and the, these you know he uh, practices before his awakening 
right and he realized that those practice going too much on the extreme and punishing your body and mind is also not right and too much engaging in sensual pleasures is also that's why when he got awakened he got the realization that there has to be a middle path so knowing very well that uh, and knowing the very well the 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 uh, the reason why they were standing and not refusing and they, they were refused to say it and giving pain to their body still buddha asked them the question that why are you doing this so, so they, when buddha asked they said that uh, they were advised to do this to remove the bad karma of the past now buddha asked them certain questions that do you remember that you have done kind of bad karmas such bad karmas in the past do you remember how much karma is uh, was there negative karma was there do you remember how much negative karma has been wiped out by these practices so they had no clue no answer they were just blindly you know practicing these things so buddha advised them that you know in a way if if if, if you if you like uh, just go by assumptions then it is like all kind of a you know people who have done the wrong deeds they are born as jains right is it that you are under the assumption that all the people who have done wrong deeds are born as jains because if you hold that assumption then maybe this is right that you do all the you know practices and everything right i myself just a disclaimer here i myself am a jain i am a born in a, as a jain uh, uh, by birth my religion is right so buddha basically here questioned that do you hold that assumption that if you have done wrong things that you have done wrong things and you have born you have carry a lot of negative karma and then you are trying to you know uh, you know kind of a eliminate the negative karma so see buddha said that there is no use of doing these kind of a very very extreme practices right buddha buddha's uh, uh, what my gather what what i have gathered from buddha buddha's thing is buddha placed a lot of importance on giving up right there is a, another video that i have made on how to clear past negative karma where buddha said the best way to do is to give up if you have been killing people or animals or insects give up and adopt the right thing right so angulimal though he had been doing all the things definitely some negative effects come had come to him but then in this life if we take up the path of the dhamma and if we start practicing the dhamma that is the biggest change we can bring to wipe out our past karma because we have completely like uh, we have done a u turn from what we were going in this direction and then we have done a u turn and now our frame of reference is the noble eight fold path which is right action right speech right li- right livelihood right effort right concentration right mindfulness right understanding right view we are completely following and we follow the five precepts no killing no stealing no lying no sexual misconduct no drinking right so that is where buddha said that you have to do the effort do not like do the too much of penis thinking that i have done oh i have done lot of bad deeds and i have to finish all of those bad deeds so don't focus too much on doing the penis in the present moment don't harm your body because body also we need for the work that we have to do right so give up whatever is wrong whatever you have been doing like wrong speech and anger and everything just take a strong intention that i will not do right and then just focus on the dhamma just be in the dhamma right so that is what the buddha advised them then they they said uh, uh, basically they said that uh, uh, there was those as jain ascetics said that the pleasure is obtained by pain so buddha totally refuted this logic right totally in in that in the sutta it is like very there was a, a passage where buddha clearly said that it is wrong to assume that you only achieve pleasure or happiness or serenity through by undergoing pain right so he said no no that is totally because see why because he has done all those things in his journey of awakening and finally he realized that this is not the way this is not going to you know uh, end me end suffering for me right so that is what he refuted so the lesson for us is again the follow the noble eightfold path do not go to any extreme all it's like balancing a cycle right if you feel drawn towards sensual pleasures come back if you feel drawn towards you know the too much of too much of meditation too much of asceticism if you feel like uh, uh, giving pain to your body or you know so then also do not go in that direction also right so and that's very so helpful as a lay people that we can 
follow the middle path, live a life in this society and continue on the path of the Dharma. So this is Middle Discourses 14, the shorter discourse on the mass of suffering. I hope this uh, this some insights that I've shared was were helpful. Do share your thoughts, realizations, insights. Do go through the the discourse. Just target, you know, one discourse per day. I will, I will, I will, I will read. Right. So, just go through and uh, uh, keep practicing. I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you so much. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.